<laughs> All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Alpha Will Basins channel. My god, I've tried making this video 5,000 damn times. If it ain't my kids getting in the way, some stupid mistake happening, or in the event of the last video where I realized, oh shit, I'm recording in a really low like resolution. I'm down downscaling and you guys couldn't even see anything that I was sharing. So let me give you a bit of an update. I'm sorry it's been so long since I've made any kind of content, but to be honest with you guys, I'm still stuck on the same goddamn problem that I've been stuck on for weeks now. For whatever reason, no matter how many goddamn Reddit posts I read, no matter how many discussions I have on Linux.org, no matter how many individuals I discuss this wish, I cannot seem to comprehend setting up a reverse proxy so that I can enable public access to those I choose to my services off of my off of my server here in the home lab like i'd like to be able to provide my family and friends with access to my next cloud server my mattermost server my git t server you name it whatever i want to be able to provide all of that under a single domain but i i just can't seem to get the reverse proxy to work for the life of me so that's why i've been distant i just don't really feel that i have any content to share therefore i don't share content I'm never going to be the next Brody. I'm never going to be the next DistroTube or Chris Titus or anyone like that. I, just, I, just, I love those guys. Great content. But I am not a content creator. I only share when I learn something really interesting or find something interesting. Or even better yet, when someone like you drops a comment below and uh, makes an inquiry, makes a question, makes a comment, starts conversation. And that's exactly why I'm here today. Thanks to... Funko Koning. I hope I pronounced that right, brother man. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate it. He says, great video. I'm also getting into enterprise servers myself. Only thing is, I don't like how loud it is. Do you experience the same or were you able to get it, uh, excuse me, were you able to get the sound down to a minimum? And I verified whether or not he actually had a Dell PowerEd server so that I could actually help him because that's what I have. And it turns out that's exactly what he's got. He's going to be picking up a Dell PowerEdge R730 next week. I've got the XD. It doesn't matter. The process is the same. And so I'm going to give you guys a crash course on how to manually control the fan speed on your Dell PowerEdge R730 or R730 XD. Uh, it's, I'm going to try and make this as quick as I can. I'm, I'll even make it faster for y'all. I'm going to dump all this information in the video description below, as well as a shout out to the individual that made the video that turned me on to this information. It, I'm literally just reiterating what I've seen in another video. So I appreciate that individual. I, I can't remember his username right off the top of my hand, uh, but I will definitely tag him below. That being said, we're going to dive right into code here. And I'm going to tell you right now, the best thing, my advice, if you're in a home lab environment with the Dell PowerEdge R730, you're going to want to be able to work next to your machine. It's just going to be easier that way. You do. You, there are options and instructions in here for using the web interface if, you, if you're not able to do this uh, right next to your machine. But I digress. Either way, we're going to get you covered. Download the Dell IPMI tool. Go ahead and install it in Drive C under IPMI tool. Go ahead and log in your iDRAC web interface and under network, enable IPMI. In Windows, search the bar, or excuse me, in the Windows search bar, type CMD and right click on command prompt and run as administrator. Type CD uh, backslash and type CD IPMI tool. You'll now be in the IPMI tool directory and now you're ready to start giving commands. Replace IP address and IP address of your Dell iDRAC or HPE ILO. Replace username and password with the iDRAC or ILO login credentials. It's convenient to excuse me. It's convenient to have the iDRAC or ILO web interface displaying the fan speeds to verify its actions as you submit the commands. The low refresh rate makes the reported speeds have a slight delay. Now, in my experience, it's almost instantaneous. It's literally like point like 1.5 seconds and your fan speeds start winding down. So you will notice the changes immediately. So the following is all executed from a command prompt. First thing you're going to want to do is enable manual fan control. Now, all of these commands are identical except for the last part of the hex code at the end, and I will elaborate on that in a minute. Now, if you're using VS Code like I am, or code if you're on Linux, um, you can go in and edit, replace, um, you could type in the IP information, as you can see, 192.168.1.xx, 
like that and replace it with your IP address. If you hit this button right here, it'll replace all of them in the document. So if you save the document, you'll be able to make a custom document with your own information. That way you can just copy and paste these commands and bada bing, bada boom, your fans are in your control. Uh, you can do the same thing with username and password. That way you don't have to type all this crap in uh, repeatedly. And there you go, you're good to go. So once you've enabled your manual fan speed, we also have disable here in the event that you need it as well as third party PCIe response states. Now what you wanna pay particular attention to if you're in a home lab environment is likely entirely different if you're in an enterprise uh, environment, you might have to have like individual control over individual fans, uh, but we're not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna do them all at the same time. Uh, for all intents and purposes here. Now, the individual that I'm going to be tagging in the video description below that uh, made a video that turned me on to this information, he broke all of these percentages down from the single digit percentages, all the way from one to 100. He's got the hex code for all of them. So if you need that, go ahead and check the, the video description and go to his video that I will link there. And he will provide you with the extensive one through 100 hex code uh, commands for all of those percentages. But for me and all of my intents and purposes as a home lab environment, I'm not really stressing my machine out that much. So I just figured, you know what, we're going to start at 10% and then in the increments of 5%, we're just going to go all the way to 100. So I provide 10% um, through 100% in 5% increments. Uh, it should be fine for any home labbers out there. Uh, when I learned about this trick, I started at 10%. I set everything, all of the fans at 10%. As soon as you copy and paste this with your appropriate information, you're gonna notice the fans wind down immediately. It's gonna be super nice because you will no longer have that 747 sitting in your basement as I did. And you'll be super happy about that. But I'm gonna encourage you that if you're an idiot like me and you drop it all the way to 10%, you watch those temperatures like a hawk. Based on your workload, you might need to bump it up. I watched it for about a week and I decided, you know what, after seeing a little bit of fluctuation, we'll go up to 15%. I watched it for another week. And then I think, it's been a while, I'll have to check my fan speeds, but I think I'm locked in at 20%. I'm running Mattermost, I'm running Nextcloud, I'm running Git T, I'm running Jellyfin, I use that extensively. Uh, you know, I've got a various servers as well as game servers. I've got like six or seven different game servers running at all times, but the traffic is not like super intense. So the demand on the server is not very high. So I can get away with just leaving all of my fans set at a fixed 20% and it's nice and quiet, it's nice and, and calm. It's not going to be super obnoxious. It's not going to be pissing off a wife and you'll be good to go. So go ahead and feel free to play with all of these percentages. See what works for you based on your workload and preferences. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up with the last but not least. We've got report temperatures command as well as report only temperatures, volt and fan sensors, power supply output and energy consumption. That being said, guys, Brother man, I appreciate that comment. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. I'll be glad to respond. If, it's, if it requires an elaborate response, I'll definitely make another video. I appreciate all of you guys who uh, like and subscribe. I appreciate it, truly. I know I don't make a lot of content, but when I do, I try to make it at least somewhat interesting. So uh, if you found this useful, definitely hit the like button. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Catch you later. God bless.